Today I want to talk to you about invisible thread, when you can use it, and what you need to change in your sewing machine to use it effectively. Hi, I'm Kim Jamison Hurst, and in the past, invisible thread has gotten a bad rap, eh, maybe deservedly so, but these days you can use invisible thread for a lot of different applications in your quilting and not have to worry about it cutting your cotton fabric or getting brittle and breaking over the years. Previously, invisible thread, or what we call invisible thread, was made of nylon, so it was quite not very soft. <laughs> okay, it was just, it was kind of brittle and it would break over time or it could break over time. But now you can get polyester thread that is invisible. And so because it's polyester, not nylon, it's not all that, you know, that brittle, harsh kind of thread that really makes me think about fishing line, to be honest. So let's talk about some of the invisible thread that I like to use and let's talk about what I like to use it for. So I like to use Superior Threads Mono Poly. Okay, it's not Monopoly, it's Mono Poly. Okay, and it is, as I said, polyester thread. So there are two colors of it. Now, we call it invisible thread. It's not really invisible, but it is hard to see. So one of the colors, if you want to call it a color, is this clear mono filament. So let's just see if I can even get it off the spool. That's always the biggest challenge. It's on here somewhere, but you can see, I'll get it off when we go to sew with it, trust me. But you can see that it is a clear shade. It looks white here, but it's really clear. And then we have this smoke, and you can see how dark it looks here. Now that's not how it comes across when you're stitching with it. Can you see it? Probably not. So it is best to use if you're using dark fabrics in your projects. And obviously if you're using lighter fabrics, you're gonna use the clear one, all right? So that's what I like to use. Now, what do I do to my sewing machine? Well, I'm going to loosen the top tension because you don't want to put too much stress on this thread. I'm going to use a top stitch needle. I have a Janome top stitch needle in the machine right now. You can get other brands as well. So that's helpful to use as well. And then the other thing I like to do with it is don't use it in the bobbin. So if you use, if your machine, I should say, uses plastic bobbins like my Janome M7 does, you really don't want to wind up those plastic bobbins with this thin but strong in, uh, polyester thread because it can actually warp the bobbin a bit. So it's just not something I would recommend doing. What can you use in your bobbin? Well, you can use a lighter weight polyester thread in there, a 68, 60 weight or 80 weight. There's no 68 weight. 60 weight or 80 weight is good to use in the bobbin when you're using invisible thread in the top. So realize you might have to adjust your tension a little bit in the bobbin and definitely reduce the tension on the top of your thread so you don't want to stress it. Okay, so let's talk about when we can use it. Well, there's different times we can use it. Let me just move these out of the way. And we're going to be using those in just a moment. But I like to use it for not piecing, okay? I don't use it for piecing. Let's just put that out there right now. But you can use it for quilting and you can use it for finishing your applique edges. So let me show you what I mean with the applique situation. So this is part of a quilt, it's called One World. It was a uh, quilt along that I co-hosted a few years ago. And this is all applique. Now, this project has lots and lots of applique pieces in it and they're all different colors. I didn't want to have to match my thread to all those different colors because first off, I may not have all those different colors of thread and I didn't want to have to go and buy uh, thread for it. But I thought this is a perfect time to use invisible thread and that's what I did in this project. So all of the pieces have been stitched down just with a straight stitch just inside the edges of the applique pieces. And I did switch between the smoke and the clear because there are different uh, colors you know, in the quilt, and some are quite light, like the moose's antlers, for example, and then his body is much darker. So on the antlers, I would have used the clear, and for his body, I used the smoke. So it blends in very well. Of course, we're closer up here, but the biggest thing I can see here, probably more than the color of the thread, is actually the stitches going through, because this is all fusible web in here. So as I have several layers, sometimes you can see the uh, needle marks a little bit better. But from a distance, you're not going to see those at all. So it worked out really, really well for this project. It saved me having to switch up my thread a lot. I only had two different colors to work with. And so this was perfect for this type of an applique project. I wouldn't recommend you use it with satin stitch, but if you're doing a straight stitch or maybe even a blanket stitch or a small zigzag, it'll work really well for that technique. 
Now let's talk about using it for quilting. I've had different people ask me about this. Can you use invisible thread for quilting? Absolutely. And have I used it? Absolutely. And it works really, really well. So let's take a look and see what that looks like when you're stitching on a block like this sample I have here, for example. Sample for an example. Okay. I want to show you one thing here and I'm going to bring it in. I think you can probably see it on this camera better. I'm just going to switch this on here. Okay, so you can see here, I've been stitching in the ditch. I've stitched in the ditch all the way along up to here, and then I went purposely out of the ditch. Yes, it was on purpose. And I've used here, this is just a regular polyester thread, so it's not the invisible thread. So then I continued back in the ditch till I got to the end. But you can see how much you can see <laughs> when you jump out of the ditch with what I will call regular thread as opposed to the invisible thread. So then I wanted to show you what it looks like if you're stitching in the ditch with invisible thread. So I'm going to put in probably the clear here. And the one thing I want to mention to you when you're using these, especially the clear, you will notice a little bit of a sheen, or you can notice a little bit of a sheen from it. Uh, probably not anything to be concerned about, but you do have a little bit of a sheen there. So I'm set up with the clear thread now, and I want to try and stitch in the ditch here. I say try because, you know, it's always a trial. Now, I am free motion quilting this. I know that's going to freak some of you out, but I want to show you free motion quilting with it as well. So I didn't want to have to change my machine settings over. So let me just get this in here in the right spot first. Here we go. That's better. Okay. And we'll bring up our bobbin thread, hopefully. There we are. The toughest part about using this thread is being able to see where it is. And once I've got a hold of the thread end, I hate to let it go. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to lock my threads here. All right, and the other thing you want to do when you're working with the invisible thread and you are quilting like I am actually doing right now, or any kind of stitching really, is slow down a little bit as well. So I'm going to have to adjust my speed here and see how I do. So I'm going to just try and go along here and see what it looks like. And that's too fast for what I'm doing. I love speed control. Okay, now I've been going along in the ditch, doing pretty well, I think. Let's go out of the ditch and see what it looks like. Well, we'll go along a little bit more because I want to line it up with the other one we're out of the ditch. And I'll just go down to the end here. All right, I'm going to lock my stitches. And break my thread. All right, so let's see how we did here. I'll go over to this camera and you can see, well hopefully you can't see <laughs> me stitching in the ditch. Now you can see where I've come out there and again what you're noticing there is probably the needle marks, right? But when you compare it with here you really can't see this very well but you can definitely see that and it's the thread that you can see. I don't really think you can see much of a shine there. I certainly can't. Um, it works really well. And by the way, if you've never tried doing this uh, quilting in the ditch rather than uh, using your walking foot, for example, you could do this with a ruler foot if you wanted to. That will make it a little bit easier for you to position things. But it worked pretty well for me just with the free motion quilting. All right, so that's one of the things you can do with it. It works really well for stitching in the ditch because it just disappears, right? What about quilting, quilting, like free motion quilting with invisible thread, which I've got to find the end again. There we are. Okay, so let's just do a little bit of quilting in this area here so you can see or not see it as the case may be. But you can see how, how it works anyway. Okay, so now I want to adjust my speed a little bit more and we'll see what we can do here. I have no idea what I'm going to stitch, but we'll just do something. Okay, let's try something else. And we'll add something different down at the bottom here. Okay. 
All right, just doing a little bit of playing, just some different designs, but I wanted to show you that you probably can't really see what I've quilted. So when would I use invisible thread when I'm quilting? When I don't want to distract from whatever the piecing or what applique may be that is on the quilt already, but I just want to, you know, quilt it now it's in texture. So you can see there's some texture there. Can you see any better here? I don't know. There you go. You can see the design a little bit better there. Um, but you can't really, you know, when you put it down, it's really kind of hard to see, right? Um, you can probably see it a little bit better on the back. Well, not so much because I have a patterned fabric. <laughs> but I had no problems with the tension, which I dropped down a couple on the top tension. And it works perfectly fine, right? And it's not stiff or anything. You've got that nice texture that you just want with the uh, invisible thread because that's the whole point of using it in free motion quilting or in the ditch or ruler quilting even. Although I probably wouldn't do it with ruler quilting because you usually want to see the designs then. But if you don't want to see the quilting on your quilt because it's just there to add texture and you don't want to take away from what else is happening, whether it's piecing or applique, invisible thread is a really good choice. And it's also a great choice if you have a lot of colors. Let's say you have a jelly roll race quilt, a really simple quilt design, but there's all these different fabrics in it and you don't want to be matching your thread to all these different fabrics. Invisible thread is your answer to that situation too. I have lots of videos and information on free motion quilting and other quilting information on my YouTube channel. So please check the description below for appropriate links. Thanks for watching. Please give this video a thumbs up. It really helps to get it in front of other viewers just like you. And remember to subscribe and hit the bell so you'll be notified the next time I release a new video. And before you go, check out these other videos I've included just for you. For more helpful quilting information, please go to my website at www.chatterboxquilts.com.